two years ago I reviewed a set of irons that well they promised so much but delivered well let's say below expectations now hollow bodied irons with a forged face well they're not exactly new to the game they are however becoming more and more popular and when I tried the first version of this club in 2021 I was super excited because it was exactly that it was a hollow bodied iron that was very similar to that of many of the others on the marketplace but with a slightly bigger profile and what that meant was high handicappers got access to a line of product that didn't currently exist the only problem was I was left slightly disappointed by what was the first version of the Strixon ZX4s but then take a leap two years forward and these irons are pretty much unrecognizable and I don't just mean from a visual perspective now I did mention at the beginning that these irons are perfect for higher handicappers who want access to a re more refined let's say lineup of irons but I also think this lineup could also lend itself to plenty of other golfers maybe lower in that handicap scale who also need help in certain areas and I'll get to that bit very very shortly but first of all let's just start with the looks and how they've changed so much since that initial iteration so in today's video I'll be looking at the five seven and pitching wedge and we'll collect data and I'll tell you just why these things have changed beyond recognition like I said not just visually but also in performance which we'll discuss later but that looks thing is a big move for me I haven't got the original ZX4 with me but if we put a picture up on screen for you now one of the things was it's yes these are hollow bodied irons but they made no sort of secret of that if you like and it was a kind of almost bulbous back if you like it certainly didn't look like a cavity back which is what it looks like now and if you put the new version on screen of ZX4s I think well at least I think <coughs> they are huge leap forward visually in two ways first of all they look a far better iron they look a more attractive iron and they look look more like a player's iron so straight away like I said from that high handicappers perspective to have an iron like this in the bag which is a game improvement iron that looks so good I think that's got to be a major tick in the box I'm a fan of a bit of shiny chrome I'm always a fan and drawn to kind of like Mizuno irons and very much again love the way these things look we'll talk about the sole unit later on when we start hitting some balls because there's some interesting um, technology that we've seen in the predecessors as well and we'll see how that performs but the other point to mention is I'm just going to throw up the new version of the ZX5 as well and the reason I'm doing that is because you can see how much more streamlined ZX4 has become with ZX5 and we all know what that means when we talk later on in the video about possibly blending sets they are almost impossible to separate trust me when they're in the bag or if I'm looking I'm doing two reviews this morning one of the ZX5 and one of the ZX4s and I literally have to pick them up and read the number on the back of these irons to separate them both that's how similar they look visually and that's a key part when it comes to blending so the first major move in terms of Strixon's advancements of ZX4s is just how good they look. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. So yes, these things look incredibly good, but there was also one other thing that slightly disappointed me with the first version of ZX4s, and that was the sound and the feel. Because ultimately what Strixon created in ZX7 and ZX5s was more of a player's type of iron that were forged, that felt butter soft. The problem then was if you wanted to put any of these in the long end of the bag, ZX4s I'm referring to, then you had a whole different iron that didn't only look very very different but it also sounded very different and I'm pleased to report that has also changed beyond recognition and I'm hoping from that shot there you'll find out or you'll be able to hear rather just how much that change has been and just how good ZX4's sound and ultimately feel and I always think that's a major challenge in terms of hollow body irons because <coughs> excuse me everyone that I've tried always falls down in that department they have a forged face but that hollow body still seems to let off that slightly clickier sound they Srixen 
have managed to overcome that. I don't know how or what has changed things so significantly, but it is a much, much softer feel. Clearly, it's not as good as that full forge of the ZX-5, but, and hopefully you picked that one up again. I'm also in these pretty good. I'm super impressed with these irons. I might as well tell you that bit now, but the sound and the looks have just gone beyond recognition. So we have an iron that feels good, sounds good, looks good. What about that performance? Now I am of course as ever voicing my opinions just on how good these things look first of all but I would like your opinion which is more important and definitely from the masses it helps to see it in that comment section below so please get involved let me know first of all what your thoughts are on the looks of this ZX4 lineup the second thing you can do for me is if you do have enjoyed this video then please consider hitting that like button because it's again a massive help for the channel and one final request before we go too far over 50% of you are watching this video right now. Do not subscribe to the channel, and I would ask you to, to consider doing so. It is free of charge, as a reminder. It costs you absolutely nothing. So if you have enjoyed the channel, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. Back to performance. Right, so from a performance perspective, I'm actually gonna start off at the long end of the bag, being the five iron in terms of what I've got right now. The first thing to note about it, you've got a bit of top line. Um, but not so much so that it is off-putting. In fact, in most cases, and certainly who this um, club is aimed at, that bit of bulk will give you a bit of confidence. The other thing you're gonna see is from a ball flight perspective, just how good these things are picking the balls up in terms of a launch angle. That's really important because as we know, particularly down this end of the bag, five iron can be a real struggle in terms of our ability to get this ball airborne. I can report it's launching the ball extremely high. That was a better strike than the first one, a bit more committed. It's coming down with snow on. It's got a half decent spin number, although I will talk about why I think that the spin number is even low for me in here, and that's to do with this sole unit. I'll talk about that very, very shortly. But the five iron, first thing to report, numbers are good overall. We'll talk about them at the end. Uh, and I'm talking about good in terms of the parameters that you would be looking for in this type of iron. And for me, that's about launch angle, it's about carry distance, it's about descent angle, and yes, we'll throw a bit of that spin number in there as well. I'm just gonna carry on and go straight into the seven iron. Again, I just cannot get over just how much improved these things look. We've got, I'm looking down on now, if you've ever picked up a P790 from TaylorMade, that's the closest thing I could suggest it looks like in terms of from above. I would guess if I had that iron alongside me now, they'd pretty much be hard to split in terms of looks and that's exactly what it reminds me of. Yeah, decent ball again. Launch angle really good. The feel baffles me completely because again, how they've managed to leap this forward because effectively what they've done, that back end has become, like I said, a cavity back. That whole sort of infill that we've seen on the previous model has disappeared. And like I said, all that's forged is the face, but they've got such a better feel. And again, same, <coughs> excuse me, can't clear my throat this morning. Same thing that we've seen in terms of the five iron, all those parameters that we're looking for are really, really good indeed. I'm then gonna bring two pitching wedges forward. And again, I've gotta have a quick glance down and make sure I put the right ones in hand. I'll put that down for one second. This pitching wedge is from this ZX4 lineup. And for me, at this end, there's a bit too much bulk on that uh, top line. Like I said, I personally would prefer, and I think a lot would prefer, a little bit more refinement at this stage. Now the first things to mention are, in terms of a field perspective, in terms of the dry ball data I've collected, tick every box. No complaints whatsoever in that perspective. But the reason I've brought the other club with me is because I'm also, I mentioned I'm collecting data and reviewing the ZX-5s at the same time. Now, I'm finding the ZX-5s to be very, very forgiving. But what I certainly find is that there is little in terms of performance difference between the ZX-5 pitching wedge and the ZX-4 pitching wedge. So 
there is a real option I mentioned earlier to mix these clubs up. This becomes, it's not, it's not a huge leap forward in terms of uh, that top line, but it is noticeably different. It's certainly more refined in its overall shape. And for me, the obvious thing to do would be to swap these out. Now I'd be personally considering even from maybe eight, nine pitch and wedge, maybe even seven iron from what I've seen in terms of the testing to go into these ZX5s. But from a visual perspective, and hopefully we'll get a close up of these two for you, they are just, they just blend so well. And that's one of the key things that Strixon have done with this year's lineup of ZX4s. And that's it, we're done and dusted. There's no more opinion I can give you apart from a little bit of dry ball data, which we'll go through shortly. One final point to mention as well is when you're blending a set, a lot of people sometimes comment and get confused that they look at lofts that are different between two sets. And a typical comment will, well, you'll need two six irons to bridge the gap of that. Well, no, you don't. Just to let everybody know, and I know a lot of you will be aware that what would happen is the manufacturer or the club fitter will bend the loft in terms of one or the other to make sure you've got some sort of alignment throughout the set. Hope that makes sense, but you will not have an issue with gapping if you blend two sets of irons together. Right, very, very briefly, let's put the numbers of the ZX4 on screen for you now. Um, that pitching wedge, uh, 112 carry, uh, 76 spin, descent angle 51, nothing really of particular interest there, only to say that that spin number was really respectable. Again, for me, off mats, and I mentioned I said something about the V Soul. I've actually got the V Soul, the ZX5, I've just grabbed there, but I'm not sure that. The whole thing about VSOL is about its interaction with turf and how it enters and exits turf based on the sort of chamfer on the sole. I'm not sure it does it any favours in terms of hitting off a very firm mat. So I think it's slightly detrimental in terms of that spin number in particular when you're playing off of a mat. So I'd like to get these out on the course. Seven iron number, um, launching, this is where it gets interesting, 21.6 again, which is a high launch angle. 33 peak height and 158 carry, 4850 spin. This is where, again, some of you will argue that spin number's dropping low. I'm not really one that sort of buys into that massively. And again, these out on the golf course, launching, descent angle. I don't care what that spin number says. These things will be stopping. And then we go into that five iron, which is probably the most impressive number in terms of the launch angle. 19.8 degrees with a five iron is really interesting. 3000 spin, again, there's that argument that could be a little bit too low. 42.9 descent angle with a five iron again just tells you how sort of high the ball is going 30 yards peak height 176 um, carry so a nice distance between the seven and the five iron you slot a six iron in between there and we should have some equal gapping of maybe what sort of 12 12 13 yards i can live with that again really really interesting sort of numbers in terms of performance it's hard to knock there's not really a parameter apart from again that spin number but if you're a keen follower of the channel you'll know that my spin number always comes up short in terms of what i achieve so just bear that in mind if you're a new viewer to the channel yeah don't be too put off by that spin number but overall like i said huge improvement huge shift in every department for me Maybe the sort of performance is similar to what we've seen before. I could certainly hit a five iron a lot longer if we decided to go after one. There is the ability to do that. I think one other thing that I'll just overlay here is a couple of shots where, again, the question is asked of these type of irons, are you able to shape the shot? Well, what I certainly tried was hitting a bit of a right to left and was certainly able to do that maybe not able to control it as much as uh, I want to based on ability. And then that left to right shot as well is very, very playable. So yeah, they're, they've, they've got everything going for them. And seriously, this is a real, real interesting launch from Strixon. My guess is I'm not going to get involved in pricing because everyone quotes RRPs and that's not what they sell at the shop. So I'm always confused as to what they sell at. But based on previous models, they should come in at a lower price point than their main competitors that we mentioned earlier. So for me, this is something you should really consider trying. 
and uh, I'm not sure which way these videos come out, but make sure you check out the ZX5 review as well, because there is definitely an interest in blending these two sets together. Right, give me your feedback, give me your comments down below, let me know what you thought of what you've seen in today's video, keep it polite, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back to you with some form of response. Thank you for watching, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow night.